Today I'm going to show you how I make a sweater mug, but first I would like to give a shout out to Jessica Putnam Phillips of Clayshare. She has all kinds of classes and different things, and I saw her do this on one of her um, live uh, videos, uh, sessions, and on, on these fondant molds, and I was completely intrigued by it. So these are all in sweater mug patterns. Um, I have uh, a few of them, and I and it's so much fun to do this. So. Like every uh, potter, you learn something from a potter and you learn something from another potter or you figure something out yourself and then you come up with your own way of doing things. So I wanted to show you how I make these sweater mugs. So I have this pattern that I've cut out. It's um, nine and three quarter inches by six and a quarter inches. And I use a three quarter inch um, cookie cutter, uh, three and a quarter inch cookie cutter for the base. So I start off by rolling out slabs to um, three eighths of an inch, and then I let them dry for a while, either overnight or maybe through the day, between two um, plaster wallboard pieces so that they lose some of their moisture. And I'm doing this with porcelain right now, and that's kind of a, it's a little deceiving on when it, it feels like it's dried a lot, and it maybe isn't as dry as it is. So even just working this now, it's gotten floppier than it was when I first started. So I then um, roll it out to about um, maybe a little bit more than a quarter inch. So I'm thinning it out a little bit to sort of wake up the clay and make it just a tiny bit thinner before I start. So today I'm going to use this, this fondant mold and this edger. And did I say these were from Marvelous Molds? Great company, so cool. And also, don't forget to check out Jessica Putnam Phillips and all the classes she offers. They're really great. And I'm not, <laughs> she is not endorsing me to say that or asking me to say that. I just want to give her credit since I learned this from her. All right, so I'm going to take the mold and I'm going to, um, this is going to be the major part of the mug. And I'm going to take a rolling pin, anything you have that you can press down and move slowly across the pattern so that you can get a good impression. And what I like to do is stop before I get to the edge. And then I take the pattern and I fit it in and I can see where it sort of ended. And then I continue on from there because you need more to um, than one of these little molds to uh, make it long enough for a mug. So now you can see how the clay is moving and thinning out some. Let's see if I got a good, oh. That always happens when I start off. So I'm going to just give a little bit more, and you can always fit it back down again. You can feel it uh, get into place. So there we go. Okay, so that's, that's that one. So I did do a little kind of extra stuff here, but you want to be, you know, pushing, pushing down, but you want to be careful to not create a thin spot. That's why I don't roll all the way to the edge of this and then connect it because I found that I was creating thin spots. But you gotta find the best way that works for you. So now I'm gonna do the same thing with the rib. And again, press, but make sure you're not pressing on your stuff that you've already done. Stop before the end, fit it in, continue on. And you will have to play with this some. It takes a while to get the hang of how not to create that um, thin spot. And now you notice the clay moved and, and this part over here is much thicker. So what I then like to do is take my pony roller and thin that out a little bit and you'll see the clay move. It doesn't matter that there's getting a pattern here. And it also straightens out this line over here so we'll get a better connection from the cylinder. So now I'm going to release my clay. And I'm going to put my pattern down and try to find the thicker part over here because this part's much thinner and when we go to cut the edges it could cause a little bit of an issue. So I'm going to try to center this between two ribs. Doesn't always work. And I'm also going to leave about an about an inch of blank, you know, of no pattern. And you have to figure out what works best for you when it comes to that. You may want more, you may want less, but I'm going to throw that part on the wheel to thin it out so it will actually be taller than the inch we see now. Okay, get my knife and cut it out. Okay.
Okay. So normally what I do is I will make a bunch of these at one time, cut a bunch, and then, um, then do the next step. But today I'm going to do them all at the same time. So I'm going to thin out, I mean, what do you call it? <laughs> Rub these edges. And now using my edge cutter, which is a tool by Sim, I am going to cut the edges, one on either side. So I'm going to go to this side, and then I'm going to um, use my finger here to thicken it a little bit, um, or smooth it, and then my, um, what do you call it, uh, score, and then flip it over, make another cut, and see how it ripped a little bit, because it was a little thin in those spots, but I mean, what are you going to do? Okay, score. And then this I learned from um, the potter, Sarah Pike, to give a, um, uh, give it, give it the memory that it is a cylinder. She did it a little differently, but this seems to work well for me. So I kind of bend it a little bit at that um, edge because that's the part that's going to want to snap apart the most. And I kind of just roll it up. So now I have given it some cylinder memory. I'm going to take some slip and you can see it's getting even floppier and now we're going to connect it. And the idea is that these edges should connect nicely in a join so you don't have like a thick spot, um, but it's just e an even cylinder. So I'm going to have to turn this momentarily to get this to connect because I can't do it at this angle. Sorry. So I want to make sure I have a good join at the top and then I'm going to go, go as far down as I can. I can't get my hand all the way in so I'm going to have to flip it over and make sure I have a good join at the bottom. Oops, it's a little slippery from the slip. And then I want to, yes. So the place where it's going to want to separate when I put this on the wheel is right where this seam is. So you really want to work on that. And even though you kind of have to rub out a little bit of the pattern, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, you, you got to do it. <laughs> All right. So there's the, um, connection and you can see it's just about even at that point. All right. So I'm going to let this sit for a minute. Can rub in the inside seam a bit but we'll work on that in a minute so now i have this piece of clay left and if you don't have a piece of clay left that's okay you can um use another piece but what you want to do at this point is thin this piece out a little bit because i'm not going to trim my bottom so i'm going to just roll it a bit to thin it out and make sure it's big enough for the circle which it is okay so this is, um, I don't know how thin it is. I wish I could tell you. And you're kind of, kind of, you can't, if you make it too thin, then you can't, um, uh, then you won't be able to get an impression in the clay like I'm about to do. So now I want to take my, um, oh, always compress. I mean, what do you call it? Um, uh, always, uh make sure to do this. So I'm working right now because I have two clays in my studio. I'm working on a board also by Sim. It's got, it's a canvas board. And because the other clay I use is pretty dark, I wanted um, to not mess the porcelain up. So I'm working on this instead of directly on my table like I usually would. So now I'm going to take the uh, rib and I'm going to roll it in. And this is going to be for the base. But I, ha I like putting something on the bottom. So I'm going to create a little gap in between, which is where my signature is going to go. And of course, it has created a thick spot. So I'm going to just take my roller and try to thin it a little bit. Okay. And then, oops, let's get rid of that. Don't fall. And I want to make sure that I have a good... Um, ring, lots of clay for the ring, 
And where's my signature stamp? So I'm going to cut out the ring. Okay. And then I'm going to take my signature stamp before I forget. And so now this is probably thinned out to an eighth of an inch. That's my guess. I don't know. And I'm going to, in a moment, I'm going to show you an added bonus to this video. We're going to make a, a um, mitten, um, knit mitten ornament. Okay, so um, what I like to do is use these yogurt cups to round things out. They don't have to be by this brand. <laughs> and so I'm going to round the top. Make sure you know which is the top and which is the bottom. And you can see how messed up that is. Uh, around the bottom. That's oh, still, that's stretched out a bit. Okay, that's close enough, I guess. And we're going to score. And score here. There's my brush falling down. Okay, take some slip, put it on here. My slip is pretty gooey today. It probably needs a little bit of water, but that's okay. It works like this too. Do that. Yeah, this is kind of wanting to be an oval, so I'm going to just round it out one more time before I put this on here. So, yeah, I can see it um, pressing in a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, now I'm going to take my top, bottom, sorry, put it on, and make sure everything looks good, that it's in the, it, it's a, just a fit, perfect fit. So then I'm going to wiggle it a little until I feel it um, connect. Okay, and you can see it, it doesn't move anymore. Okay, and then I'm going to, if you don't have a banding wheel, that's okay, but I'm going to use a banding wheel because it makes it easier. Otherwise, uh, you kind of have to pick it up and turn it instead of just uh, turning it. I'm going to clean, clean off my pony roller a little bit. It's all gunked up from the slip. Okay, now what I like to do, and everybody again does this differently, is I like to press down and then roll over a little bit of clay. And so you see, you could just do this without the banding wheel, just turning it yourself. But I like, I like using the banding wheel. So I press and roll over that little extra clay. So it, it'll give a little added thickness where the join is, hopefully. It doesn't always get everywhere. Okay, and when I've pinched all the way around, I'm going to kind of see if I can see if there's any spots that I need to do a little bit more. Okay. And then I'm going to take my roller and just go like this to kind of make, get it as round circular as possible. And then we're going to flip it over. And using my finger, I'm holding it a little bit on the left and just smoothing it in with my right hand. Okay. Then we want to do a little bit of um, work on the inside. I've got a brush, uh, which thanks to a workshop I did with Martha Grover, can I get this in the camera, I learned about this great brush by Catalyst. It's a number four. It's nice and long and a little bit stiff. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to go in there and go round and round at the base. Uh, along the seam to get that nice and blended in. And then I'm going to use the brush to uh, work on that inside seam too. And I might need a little slip on there to kind of smooth it out. So I don't, so I have as little of a bump as possible because the bump can kind of throw you off when you're putting it on the wheel. And I want to, again, I'm going to blend this in, the seam, definitely here at the top, because 
I'm going to throw this part so we want it as in there as possible. And I'm going to try and go down as far as I can and do this. And it's a little easier to do once you have the base on because it kind of holds its shape a little better, I find. And then I'm going to put my little yogurt cup in here. And I'm not going to press it tight because the, as this shrinks, it will um, tighten around there. And I will check it periodically. So ne the next thing I do is I leave these um, to sort of all meld up together. And I leave them maybe overnight or throughout the day, however long, usually covered in plastic. And then the next day I will put them on the wheel, which is what I'll show you later. But first I'm going to show you the little bonus. So I've got here a piece of extra clay and a mitten cookie cutter. So I'm going to thin this out a teeny bit more. Not too much because you do need to get that um, pattern in there, but I don't want them to be too heavy, so I don't want them to be too thick. Okay. Ah. All right. And now I'm going to figure out, so I have more than enough clay this time, so I'm going to create the edge. Oh, actually, I like to do this first. I'm going to do this, but I want to make sure there's enough room for the edge, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to roll this pattern in, and that is going to be the mitten part. And then we're going to roll in the rib. All right, and let's release this clay. I'll show you what it looks like. And I'm going to take the cutter and this part is going to be the rib so i'm going to place it down on here oh and it helps to use to get an even cut by doing it like that and then um and then i have a little mitten um ornament i'll have to put a hole in it which i'll put up here and i'll smooth it out some and it's not too thick, so there you go. And I do have a little bit of extra clay, but I can't find my mini ornament cutter. So I will also cut another little one over here because that should fit. And I'll have a big and a small. Anyway, that's it for this step. And I will be back when these are ready to put on the wheel. So the cylinder has been sitting um, overnight and is still kind of a, a soft leather hard, but it holds its form. You don't want it to be leather hard at this point. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, oh, first, I'm going to start off by saying this part is kind of a pain, but if you get it right after practice, you know, it took me a while to get there, and I still don't always get it right, especially when using porcelain, um, then it looks really, really nice, but it is a pain. <laughs> so you might want to try this with stoneware first or, you know, a white stoneware or a dark stoneware. So anyway, I'm gonna, I put a little bit of water down and now I'm gonna wiggle the pot to get it to grab. And when I feel it grab, um, the next thing I wanna do is see how close to centered it is. You can still move it at this point. Now, keeping in mind that the piece is not completely exact anyway, it makes it hard to get it perfectly centered. But that's close enough. So I'm going to take this long-handled brush that we've used before, and I'm just going to press down. You can see how off this is. Hopefully you get a better rectangle than mine, because mine is a little off, and I guess that's why it's doing this. I probably should make a new one. And then you take your finger. We want this to really adhere to the bat. So I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to press towards the clay, that little bit of extra clay that's there, and down to kind of grab it and have it um, stick to the bat. So now you see it's pretty secure at this point. And sometimes it comes off um, if I put a little too much water or, I don't know, a little too much pressure. So, um, but mostly it will stay at this point. I'm gonna get my sponge. First thing I'm gonna do is work on the rim. You can see how, oh, wait. And you also wanna check to make sure you didn't throw it off. Well, I don't think it's off. I think this is just the whole piece is off. Okay, so I'm going to work on the rim first. Put a little water here, not a lot. This, well, this is porcelain, so it's kind of a pain. <laughs> but 
it, whatever you're comfortable with, and maybe not quite as fast a wheel as I just had. So the, the tricky part with this is kind of just ignoring that it's off, which is not that easy to do, <laughs> I will say. So I'm just thinning it out a bit and pulling it up, trying to get it somewhat centered at the top. You can see that it's not. Um, but the top is okay. Sometimes the top is off and I will take a knife or a wire and a, usually not a pin tool because I think it, it's a little difficult with a pin tool. So I'll show you with a knife. So I've got this knife and I'm going to, very slow, stick it there and then take off the top. And you don't have to do this every time, but I can, when looking at this, I can see there's a thin spot here and a thick spot here. So it was definitely worth doing. And hopefully that's all we'll have to take off. And so let's work on that rim again. All right. So the next thing, that looks pretty good. And you know, these are just never going to be exact. They're going to look, when they're not sitting on the wheel, they look pretty good. But, um, and you can't always see where it's off, but this is hand built, so it's not going to be as good as a wheel grown piece. So I like to use, um, start with this rib, um, and I use it this way. And what I'm trying to do is belly out this part the most and this part a little bit less. And now you have to be really conscious of that seam. Oh, that's right. If, if, if your seam is still showing on the inside, it's not, oh, this one looks pretty good. Then it's not a bad idea to just take your brush and rub it a little bit before you get started. Now, you're gonna notice this is a little narrow for my hand. So I am gonna end up pushing this out a bit on the top, but hopefully it won't be too bad. So I put a little water on my rib and I'm gonna hold it upside down. Sometimes I lose it, so I try to get a good grip on it because when I, my hand's in here, it's fighting me a little bit. So I'm not gonna go too fast, and I'm just gonna go down, pushing, not extremely hard, but pushing a bit, trying to be as even as possible. Oops, and see what happens when you get, oh boy. All right, let's get a little gouge. Let's see if we can, I'm gonna go down there, and I'm gonna very lightly in this section, see if I can even it out a bit, okay? And then I'm coming back up going down. Let's see what it looks like. Now, at this point, after I pushed it out some, I like to switch. So now check out our seam. It's beginning to split a little. It doesn't really split, but it is. So I'm going to take my rib. It is a little um, showing, I guess is the way of saying it. All right, I'm going to take my rib and rub it in a bit. And now I'm going to switch to this rib because I want this rounder curve. And um, put a little water on it just a little bit and then go down in there nice and slow okay and I'm not pushing all that hard and I'm trying to push out the belly and a little bit of this top part but the part I want to be the widest is right about here and that's just the shape I'm going for. You don't have to do that. It's just what I like. So I'm going to just do a tiny bit more. I'm starting at the top and going down just a tiny bit more. All right. I think that's pretty good. Um, sometimes I like to take my wooden knife and use the bottom of it just to get that little bit at the bottom. And if I'm looking in, I'm looking in this now and I can see that it's kind of uneven. <laughs> which, you know, it's, it's handmade. So uh, let me see if I can show you what I mean. I'm not sure you'll be able to see it. But if you look inside, it's not a perfect circle at the base. But that's okay. It's part of the fun of these. All right, let's make sure our seam is doing okay. Seems to be. Okay. And we're going to put the handle there so that it's less obvious. Okay, I'm going to throw the rim a little bit more. Now, sometimes I split the seam. And if it's not too bad a split, you can put a little clay on it, some nice soft clay, and that might work. Um, but once it's split, it's really hard to reconnect it. So you kind of just have to 
see if you can repair it. And if you can't, well, then make another one. All right, so I'm going to just try and thin out this rim a little. So I'm squeezing with my hand, see the position my hand is in, on either side. The sponge is on either side, and my fingers are squeezing a little bit to try to thin out the rim because that's where your mouth goes, so you want the rim to be nice, nice. And let's bring this up a little bit more. I find the hardest things with the, these mugs is figuring out the proportions of each section, like where you want it to be bellied out and how high, how much of this part you want thrown and, and, and to have it look the most balanced that it can. So you'll have to probably play around with that a bit because I think it's different for everybody. Now I'm going to grab this rib again upside down. I'm going to use it to curve out my lip. I guess I kind of go in a little bit with it at that point, just a tiny bit, push in. And you can see we've got that like little uneven bulge where the, let's see if I can show you that. Okay, right here where the um, connection was. So you can see it's right there. So you might be able to take a knife and cut a little bit of it off with the wheel not moving for this case. Or you just ignore it. Whoops. Maybe I should have just ignored it. Because <laughs> it's not really noticeable when it's not moving. Now I've got a chamois. And I'm going to just smooth that out. Again, I'm pinching a little bit. Try to fix where I dinged it. Let's see. Okay. And then what I like to do is look at it and see, and I, for this I usually have to hold it up or you go all the way to the side, is this part out enough to balance this part over here? And if I'm happy with it, then I won't push it out anymore. If I feel like it's, um, it's not quite there, then I'll get the rib and I'll push it out, you know, I'll curve it a little bit more or use my finger to curve it a little more. But you can see the lip is a little wonky, but that's what happens with these. I really want to fix that part that I messed up, though. All right. Let's see. Now, I find that I have to either, wow, <laughs> it's getting worse instead of better. So just leave it. You might be able to fix it when you take it off, you know, take it off the wheel and it's dried up some. So if you're happy with the curve and everything looks like you want it to look, then you can, at this point, um, just clean up this little bit that you, this little gunky part here, and then we'll probably turn it over to trim it a little bit when it's done. And it, you'll see that it's still stuck to the bat. So I'm going to let it sit and wait until it's ready to come off the bat. So I was finally able to pop the mug off of the bat. It was pretty stuck on. And when you do that, you want to be careful. I wiggled it a little bit to get it off, but you have to be careful because sometimes this base will stick to the bat and it'll separate from the mug. So if it feels like it's separating, stop and wait. Okay, so I'm using a Giffen grip to trim these, which is a great tool, but if you don't have it, you can just do it the way where you add, you know, put lugs of clay down at the bottom. It's just, I find it difficult with vertical forms to do that. And I really appreciate this tool for doing things like this. So all I'm going to do is take off a teeny tiny bit of clay. There isn't much extra clay there, but I'm just going to smooth it out and get rid of a tiny bit. And you know, if it's a little off, don't worry about it because this is hand built and it isn't exact and you can't even trim it exact. So basically just take that little bit of clay off and be careful because there isn't much. And I have gone through and then I'm going to smooth it out with my fingers. If you have a rib handy, you can do that. And um, also make sure to smooth this edge right here on the top because that's what's going to touch your table. So you want it to be soft, a soft connection. Oops. Giffen grip. And then the other thing I do, which I did earlier because they were kind of getting dry, is I push in the base a bit so that um, 
there's only really this edge that's sitting on the table and all this texture that we have will not be touching the table and not be a potential issue. So now I'm going to just leave these um, covered under plastic and I'm going to pull some handles. So a few years ago I started using a coil to extrude my handles from and then I mean to pull my handles from and then I got an extruder so I extrude this one inch coil and I cut it up into one inch thick coil I cut it up into pieces that are maybe between five and six inches long it kind of depends on how long you want your handle to be and then I take these pieces and I want to get them closer to the handle shape so I smack them down on the table and get it more of an oval shape than you know flattened on each side so then we get the bucket of water and with a dry left hand you pit hole the top and I like to start with one big dunk to get it nice and wet and then you start pulling just like you would um, you know from a pulled handle that's from a clump of clay but it's started for you already so you don't have to start from that lump of clay so I, I find this much much easier and I can pull them faster and I get more consistency so I start off by with my hand in this pinched um, shape pulling the handle and I turn the clay and I'll even turn it in my hand because your the shape of your hand is different on both sides so you want to get it as even as possible so the key is to Keep your hand wet and pull at an even pressure. If you pull too tight, you'll pinch it or you'll create thin spots. But if you keep your pressure pretty even, you can see it's getting longer, but it's pretty, it's even in thickness. Then I'm going to take my thumb, which I have wet again, and I'm going to slide it down the center because I like handles with that indentation. If you don't like that, you don't have to do that. Okay, and I'll do that. Pretty much every time I pull, I'll go back and do that um, to the center to keep that form. So another thing you can do is you can pinch your fingers and thin it out that way a bit. And then you can go back and do the center. And that's pretty long and it seems to be a good thickness. So I'm going to stop now. So I'm going to dry off my right, right hand, put this in my left hand, and then I'm going to pinch off this big extra clump of clay. And if you need a knife, you can use a knife. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on a, I have one of those um, poster, uh, the things that posters are mailed in, a cardboard tube. And I'm going to put this over the cardboard tube and let it dry so that it's no longer as floppy as it is now. Holds its shape, but I can still bend it. So a soft leather hard. So now it's time to attach the handle. I did let them get a little too dry after I pulled them, so I sprayed them with water and put them under plastic, and now they're a good um, soft leather hard. So the first thing I do is I find the seam, and above the seam on the part that has no texture, I will score for the top of the handle, and then where the mug starts to curve down, that's where I like to put the other end of the handle and here you have to score a little more because there is all that texture there okay get rid of that, some of that okay now we take the handle let me move this take the handle hold it in your left hand away from you and with a knife you're going to cut well you're going to cut away from you sorry that wasn't quite the right words so that we get an angle for the, um, this part of the mug. And what it's going to do is it's going to sit up against the mug in a comfortable way. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I squeeze a little bit of clay um, from this so that we end up with this like little lip of clay here, which we'll use later. And then here, there's a little too much clay on the bottom. So I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to cut away a little bit of clay. Okay, well, it's better to be even. And that was not. And then you can squeeze that down a little. So now we have this kind of extra clay all around to attach to the mug. I'm going to take my scoring tool, score. OK. 
Okay, and then we're going to move the bug back here. I'm going to slip the top, slip the handle top, and now I'm going to put the attach put the handle where I want it to be, and then I'm going to wiggle it a little. So I'm putting my thumbs on either side of the handle, and I'm pushing in using my finger over here and when I no longer feel it, feel it wiggling against my inside hand I know I have a good um, connection. Okay so now we're going to leave that alone for a minute. And he's got a little messed up sitting on the table but that's okay. And now we're going to work on the bottom. So the first thing here is you want to um, cut away some of this extra clay because this handle is way too long so I know I need a good amount so I'm holding it again in my left hand and I'm cutting away from myself to create an angle and let's see how that looks that's still too much clay so I'm going to cut a little more be careful because I've often cut too much at this point and ended up with too short a handle so let's see so I think that's pretty nope I think I want a tiny bit less clay less handle so I'll cut a little bit more Put it where, okay, that's good. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna score. Hopefully this is in camera. <laughs> and slip both. And just like we did on the top, I'm gonna put my inside hand in and, and put my uh, wiggle from the um, bottom to make sure I have a good connection. But you also wanna make sure that it's straight and this is not, and you can still move it a tiny bit I need a tiny bit more. Okay. All right. So when you're comfortable with where it is, then you take your hand and your thumb and you just squish all this clay down into the mug. All right. I kind of messed this handle up a little, but I should be able to fix it. Now we're going to go back to working on the top. So I'm going to take my, I'm going to put my thumbs on either side and I'm going to press down all this clay on the top. Now you could have stayed working on the top and then and then did the bottom when the top was completely attached, but I, I like doing it this way because it gives a chance for the slip to do its softening up of everything and I think I just get a better connection when I do that. All right, so now we're going to work on that little bit of clay. See how there, there's that little bit of clay there. So I'm going to take my rubber tip tool and I'm going to mush in that clay so I get a nice um, connection. I cover up that seam and it makes it more, um, you know, kind of like the mug came out of the handle. I mean, the handle came out of the mug. And then with the bottom, I'm going to use the, the narrow side and I'm going to do the same thing there. Um, there isn't that little clump of extra clay. So here I'm just kind of making sure I have a good connection. And because I tend to bang this around a bit and I'm not that clean with my connections. I'm going to take a brush, a stiff brush with a little bit of slip on it, and I'm going to clean this all up, smooth it in, clean it up. So these mugs are going to sit under plastic because they're porcelain. With stoneware, I probably would just do a couple of days, but porcelain is, porcelain is just more challenging. <laughs> so I'm going to let these sit for maybe three or four days under plastic. I will check them and see how they're doing. Uh, sometimes I have to do a little bit of extra uh, work on the handle if they start to separate a little or the clay cracks because of the unevenness of the dryness of the handle and the mug. But hopefully these are going to be okay. And then uh, you can take one little lift up to give that nice handle look and that's it. So now we just let them dry and that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.